Hey guys, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another video here. We have Mindy with Cactus Kids R Studio. Uh, I'm your host, Julian with Paint Party Rockstar. We are going to be talking about some summer activities. And if you host summer R camps, or if you're looking to start hosting summer R camps, you're gonna want to watch this uh, video as Mindy and I will tell you a little bit about how we do what we do. So uh, first of all, Mindy, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, why don't you just real quickly tell us a little bit about what you do, who you are, and maybe where you're located at, because there might be someone out there who is not familiar with you. All right, so I'm Mindy with Cactus Kids Art Studio. I am in Phoenix, Arizona, and I teach kids art classes, during the summer, we do summer camps. I've been teaching our classes for coming up on five years now. And this will be my third year doing the summer camps. So I've kind of progressed from doing really just a few camps during the summer. And now I've got five weeks of two sessions a day and have a lot of fun with it. All right. So, um, yeah, so I do also, I've been doing a summer camp for about probably about five years now too. And um, it's super rewarding and it's been a progress, you know, it's been, um, it sounds like an easy task, but I mean, I'm sure you've been through it and it's just, you know, just sitting down and getting the schedule done and like the ideas, what we're going to do. And all of that takes a lot of work. Would you agree? Yes, it is a lot of work. What inspired you to do a kids art camp? I was already doing kids classes and I had people asking me if I was going to do summer camps. And so it's like, well, yeah, that seems like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of resources did you go to when you got started? Like, I want to know, like, because um, was it, to me, it was really, really, really fearful. There's no other word to put it because working with kids was Super fearful to me. I had no experience with that. Like, what kind of resources did you go to to get over that fear? Or was it was there fear for you as well? Or how how was it for you? So I was already doing the kids classes. So it wasn't so much a fear of working with the kids and dealing with that, that um, type of projects as much as I, when I first started, I had no resources really. It was just maybe Googling ideas for summer art camps and um, the first year, I think I did three camps, three sessions, maybe two days each. So they were very short and I didn't really have anything to go off of. So <laughs> this will be good to help people out if they're just getting started to have some yeah. sort of resource. Yeah, that was kind of the same for us too. We kind of just threw things together. Um, people kept asking us as well, like you guys going to do a, cause we started doing the mommy and me classes and so then, you know, people were expecting a summer camp. When you're planning your dates, because one of the questions I get a lot is from other instructors that want to start a summer camp is as far as structure. How do you structure your day, um, your week, or is it going to be more than more than a week? How do you usually do yours? I know you mentioned quickly earlier, but can you can you uh, dive a little bit deeper into that? Like, how do you sit down and and work it? Do you work around maybe the parent schedule or is it just your own availability? How, how is it for you? So it's 100% based on my own schedule. Okay. <laughs> so I work, I work a part-time job also. So I have to work around that. I work around, I have four kids. So I work around their schedules and our okay. summer vacation. So... I've done it um, three days a week, or even last year, I did some that were just two days a week because uh -huh. that's all I have availability for. So that's just, it's based off of what works for my schedule. And it works out pretty well because I have consistent days of the week that I work my other job. So I can make it all consistent for the art camps, but yeah, it's all based off of what works for my schedule. That's cool. No, that's good to hear for other people because, you know, it really just takes watching somebody do it and and hearing from somebody who's done it, what it really takes because, you know, like I said, it might sound like an easy task. I'll just put together an art camp. But when you're coming down to the details, it's like 
those those creeps the creepy thoughts you know come in and it's like is the time gonna work out are the parents going to be available i kind of see it the same way it just really is it's your own creation so you must be the one to set a standard for time scheduling and all of that of course if you are available and if you're flexible and you can look into you know, parent schedules and do a, a little bit of research as far as that goes. Of course, that helps a lot. But I think the main point is just coming to terms to what your availability is, right? And and then setting from there some sort of like flexibility within those constraints. But, right. uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you in that. As far as the themes, do you use a theme for your camp or is it more of a general idea? Um, do you, um, how do you, tell us about how do you go about putting it together? I do use themes for each week. And last year I did themes like beach and animals, space. Um, this year I changed it up a little bit just because I had some ideas. And our theme for the entire summer is art around the world. So each week is focused on a different part of the world. Yeah, so that's a good idea. Uh, so it, it's not super consistent, but I do have a theme and um, like last year, each week was just random themes. And this year it's all consistent for the whole summer. So a little different, but I think it's a fun way to do it because then you have ideas to base your projects on. Yeah, that's I, when I saw that on your page, I was like, oh, that's a really good idea because it's worldwide. You'll never run a, you'll never run out of <laughs> ideas to, you know, activities to come up with material wise like because it seems like for one activity itself even though it might not be that expensive of of a piece you know just when you break it down into one one per child it doesn't come off as that expensive for example anything that is a collage or anything like that that has several materials where do you shop so that you can um you know so that you can get the best the best for your buck, you know, bang for your buck. Like what's yeah. the best places that you shop? So where I can, I get things in bulk. So canvases I get from Michael's Pro. Um, I do a lot of stuff from Amazon. Paper I get mostly from Blick. So I can order it in sheets of 500 and or packs of 500 sheets. And just like regular paper or, or uh, color paper? Um, colored sulfide paper, construction paper, and just Walmart too. I just you make go to sure Walmart a lot. All my sequins and <laughs> yeah. pipe wires and stuff like that. Yeah. So <clears throat> one of the things I usually like to tell for someone who's never done an art camp is, even though it may seem for one project you have to order a bunch of you know from different resources, different places, but on the long run. After you're done with that activity, you have craft supplies that that can help you even come up with other things. You know what I mean? Right. So even though it may seem that you're spending all these things, all these materials on one project, but you have some left. It's not like you're going to use it all up and you're done with that. No, like you have some left that you can use for future projects. And then what happens for me is like just having these projects here on hand inspires me to come up with different ideas you know like maybe mm -hmm. speak something um would you relate with that at all for sure i have a whole plastic tote um, in my storage that's my summer camp stuff and that's where i keep all my markers and glue sticks and all of the random things that i've collected for summer camps and it comes out all the time for different projects so i definitely use it <laughs> right. Another um another thing I'd like to move on to is kind of going back to like the whole fearful feelings that one gets before going into something like this. Um, for example, how do you make sure that your kids are safe and um, you know, in, in an environment where they can, you know, express themselves? So I do have the parents sign a waiver. Uh -huh. when they oh, that's smart. um so there's that i also so i do it out of my home so you can do it through your homeowner insurance at least 
the one that I have, you can add business insurance that would cover oh, you can? to your insurance. Nice. So that's what I've done. Um, but yeah, I think a waiver is probably the, yeah. the biggest thing that I started. I mean, before insurance and all that stuff, just the waiver. I think it's smart to do a waiver, even if you have insurance, like on top of insurance. Yeah, definitely. I, pro I probably should start doing that. But yeah, you <laughs> don't have to have an insurance to start one. What I do think is that you you have to um, earn the parents' trust. I think that's something definitely. really important. Uh, yes. You Can you chime in a little bit on that? Like, how did you go about that? So, yeah, I honestly, the first few years, I didn't even think about insurance. I just, most of... Well, not even most of them. A lot of my students that do summer camps are also the ones that come to my art classes and I have a rapport with them and I'm friendly with the parents. And so I, not a good idea, I think, just to assume that they wouldn't have any problems. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I did. I mean, that's, I just assume that we're all friends here. And yeah, I think that is a big thing though, that the parents trust you when, especially they're handing their kids off to you for multiple hours of the day. Right. So they do have that trust to start with. Yes, definitely. And so basically you, you started building the connections. Would you say it was intent, probably not even intentionally, right? It's just something that happened. Yeah. You were in the just, right scenario and then you did it. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. But if you, um, if you don't have relationships like Mindy does, prior to this I think you know starting with your children um, if you have children you can do your children you can do your nieces you can do you know friends of friends their kids and stuff have them over for a um, for a free session and take some pictures and maybe that could help you you know have some of that on there so people can the parents in your community can start to um, get the sense of what you do right how do you go about marketing your your event I do have an email list. So all of the local people who have come to classes or signed up for my email list definitely get weekly emails about summer camps once I start marketing those. Nice. And then I've also done, I didn't this year because I have so many people sign up already, but last year I did Facebook ads and I haven't had a lot of success with Facebook ads other than summer camp. For some reason last year, um, I had tons of people that I didn't know at all that signed up just because of the Facebook ads. Nice. And I got a lot of new students from that. So it worked out for me, but that's, that's all good. I've done for marketing is email and Facebook ads. Email and Facebook, which I think are the most, some of the most important too. That's mm -hmm. what we do as well at the studio. We do, um, well, we did, uh, we just opened up an ad on a local magazine so i think oh, nice. that's really helping us too but um how about uh flyers do you do you print flyers and post them out i do not i did think when you talked about the magazine i have a ad in our um, elementary school the one that's in our neighborhood i did put an ad in their homework folder so they okay. see that for the whole year but that's really all I've done. I don't really do flyers. I I I do some, but I actually should. I just talking to you. I remember I, I have to go do some more. So um, so I have three sessions coming this summer. We have two of them that are kind of just general. I want to start doing themes like you are, and I did. I just this year just kind of was like I told myself I'm gonna do it next year. I'm gonna do it next year. And then summer's here and I still didn't do it. I just ended up, ended up doing the same as last year. But I did implement a uh, unicorn, unicorn summer camp, which is going pretty good. And we're going to be doing unicorn everything. Um, unicorn headbands, unicorn paintings, unicorn um, bags. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and um, let me see another question here. Now, as, um, as far as... As far as the attendance, um, what's the uh, what's the most of, of the attendance, like the number of kids that, that you can get in your in your home studio? So typically I do 12 kids. 12 kids. Uh, I can 
I have because of siblings and stuff that wanted to do it. I have bumped some of them up to 14, Okay. but that's about the max I can fit. Just put seven at each table when everyone's comfortable and it's somewhat controlled enough. I feel like too many kids, it gets a little wild and crazy and I can control 12 kids. So that's usually what Yeah. I try to get at. <laughs> That was my next question. Do you do you do it by yourself? I have my oldest daughter who just graduated from high school. She's my official helper. So I do pay her. And usually for a lot of the projects, we break up into two different groups. So I'll help one group and she'll help the other group and then we'll swap. So we do that for a lot of things. But yeah, she's she's my helper. Nice. And uh, what's the times? What time do they start and they end? I do two different sessions a day now. I have one that's nine to noon and one that's one to four. And I've actually, the afternoon is more popular, like way more people want the afternoon session. Yeah. So something to think about if you're wanting to just do a three hour camp afternoon is, has been more requested. Nice, nice. So are you filled up now or do you still have more seats to, to cover? Yes, I am filled up. Actually, I have two seats left still in the morning Me too. session. I We have two seats left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And um, so what is, um, let me see, I think we can start wrapping it up here. Um, do you have any, do you have any, uh, any insights that you, that you want to share for someone, say someone that is just starting a summer camp and they don't have any idea like where even to begin? What would you, what would you tell them? Just, you know, anything in general. Definitely, I'd say if you come up with themes for the camp, it makes it easier to plan projects because you can, you have something to base it on. It's just, not just random projects. So a theme for each pro, um, week is always helpful. And then don't underprice things. Like I feel like, especially when you're first starting out, you don't want to make it too high priced. And so you don't get enough people. But I have found that, I mean, just look at what is available in the area. And I think even this year, I feel like after looking at other camps that are in the area, not necessarily our camps, but just summer camps, I think I did still underprice it a little bit and now I'm kicking myself. So look at what is going on in the area and see what you can charge because parents are willing to pay. Like if, Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised. I feel like it's like, oh, this seems like it's a lot, but they're willing to do it. Yeah. And I do give a sibling discount also. You do? Yeah. That's cool. And I have a lot of siblings. I have families, like multiple families of three siblings that are signed up for four or five of my camps. So Nice. they're willing to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. I agree with you because there is a... Uh... There is a customer for every price. You just have to uh, you just have to prove that you're worth what you're asking for, right? Mm -hmm. And I've done uh, just like you said, I've done both. I've priced myself really low, and we get you know. First of all, if you price yourself really low, you just don't, people are not gonna take you that serious because mm -hmm. like the right people that you want won't take you that serious because you know they're. Think about it like they're in their mind they're gonna be like i'm not gonna take my child to this cheap thing you know what i mean like that's what they're i'm being brutal but like you know it's along those lines how people would would probably think um and if you price it really well you it's almost like you're shining you're like showing this shiny thing on on you know on their face because they already they already looking for something for their child to do for their children to do in the summer of time so It's just a matter of them deciding what is it that they're going to put the money on, right? And if you go really, if you go really cheap, I've gotten those scenarios too where we get the customers that we don't want. I'm not going to go into it in very much detail, but you know, it's it shows everything from the uh, education from the parents to how the children treat your studio, and you know, it's just like one of those things you have to think about. So I do agree with Mindy a lot that. You know, it's it's uh, you don't have to overprice yourself, even if it seems like you're charging too much. I, I heard someone else say, um, don't spend someone else's money, which means, you know, like, don't get in their heads about how much they're going to spend. It's not your money, it's theirs. 
have you collaborated with any 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 local any other local entity either for your business in general or specifically for the summer camp so i have and what is the most rewarding thing that you've gotten from hosting summer camp just the excitement with the kids. That's my favorite thing. When their parents come to pick them up and they run to their parents with their projects that they made, like they're always just so happy with whatever they made, even if it's something super simple. And it just makes me happy to see how happy it makes them. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Mindy. And thank you guys for watching this video. And we will see you on the next one. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Mindy. This was great.